Hello, thank you for joining us tonight. We're glad that we can be together and share a short devotional time. If you have the Bible, I do encourage you to grab it and be flipping to Deuteronomy chapter 9. Uh, we're going to start there. If you're reading through the Bible over the next three years, that is where we find ourselves in our reading right now. And we've, of course, taken a few lessons from Deuteronomy over the past few weeks. And again, we... Uh, we are witnessing the scene where Moses is speaking to the Israelites as they prepare to cross the Jordan River to enter the land. And he has uh, some reminders for them before they cross over. So again, I encourage you to flip to Deuteronomy chapter 9. We're going to start in verse 1. It says, Hear, O Israel, you are now about to cross the Jordan to go in and dispossess nations greater and stronger than you. With large cities that have walls up to the sky, the people are strong and tall, Anakites. You know them and have heard it said, who can stand up against the Anakites? But be assured today that the Lord your God is the one who goes across ahead of you like a devouring fire. He will destroy them, he will subdue them before you, and he will drive them out, and annihilate them quickly, as the Lord has promised you. And it's here I want to think about what Moses was trying to get across to them. Of course, he was letting them know that God was going to be with them through that journey of crossing over the river and going into this land to fight people who were stronger uh, than they were, who were, you know, from a military perspective, more skilled, uh, they had, you know, walled cities. It gives us the details in those verses. But the point that Moses was trying to get across to them was God was going with them. He was going ahead of them. And it was going to be because of him that they were going to be able to face these giants or, you know, these mighty warriors. And, um, you know, that, that stands true for us today. God is with us in our battles you know, sometimes we sing the song at church, the battle belongs to the Lord. And I think we need to have confidence in God. You know, when we face these big situations in life, situations that maybe we are feel fearful of, we need to remember that God is with us, he's fighting for us, and the battle belongs to him. Uh, and like I said, we just need to have confidence in him, and we need to speak that confidence out. I think God expects that from us. As we've been studying uh, about the Israelites and their wandering in the desert in past weeks, uh, we saw them oftentimes just complaining. They whined. Um, you know, they would whine about food. They would whine about water. And God viewed those complaints as rejection. I think if they had been confident in him and spoken boldly about him and what he was capable of doing, you know, God would have been just joyful with their attitudes. So I feel like that is important for us to keep in mind today. You know, with everything that's going on in this year, I think that's just an important lesson for us to think about is that God is with us. He's fighting the battles that are around us. And let's just not get focused on complaining or whining, but just have confidence in him and his abilities to fight for us. Uh, verse 4 it says, After the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, The Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. No, it is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of the land, of their land, but on account of the wickedness of these nations. The Lord your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand then that this is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff-necked people." You know, um, Moses just wanted to get across to them not to go into this land and, you know, defeat these mighty people 
and walk away with an attitude of righteousness, of pride, thinking that they had accomplished the, those things in and of themselves. He was warning them that, you know, God is the one fighting your battle. He's the one that's providing you with the land, and it wasn't because of their righteousness. He makes the point that the reason the land was being given to them was because of the wickedness of those nations who were not following God. They were not um, God-fearing people. So, again, it was because of their wickedness that the Israelites were going to be victorious, and, of course, because of God. And, you know, that, that message, it's the same for us in 2020. We uh, don't need to get caught up in thinking that we are better than other people or we are more righteous than other people. You know, we go to that verse a lot, and I think it may be in Romans where it talks about there, there's not anybody righteous, not even one. We all are flawed. We all have things that we struggle with. Um, we've all made mistakes and we know throughout the Bible that God works powerfully through people who have uh, messed up, people who have failed. Sometimes people in the Bible that we read about, they've made some pretty big mistakes, but you know, God used the mistakes and the failures to just shine through them and they have powerful stories in the Bible. I also want to encourage us from a religious standpoint, you know, not to think we have everything figured out or we are more right than other people. Um, that attitude can be dangerous when we let pride creep in over what we're doing uh, because we think we are doing it in a way that is more right than someone else. Um, it just, it never, it never works out well. You read throughout the Bible, it's just story after story of where self-righteousness and pride doesn't work out for people. And you, when you think about the Pharisees in the New Testament, they were a very self-righteous people and a very, at times, uh, they were meticulous people, very tedious people, and obeying sometimes just the letter of the law but, you know, not really being connected to God in the way that he desired. So uh, it is important for us to think about that from a religious standpoint and how we communicate that to other people who are trying to follow God. We just don't need to have a self-righteous attitude. Uh, and I want to encourage us in our current culture right now. There's a lot of opinions floating around. Um, and at times it feels like everybody is trying to be the one who is right. And as long as matters of the earth are talked and discussed about amongst people, no one person's going to get it all right. Um, we just have to rely upon God to provide us the right way. We have to lean on his ways. And I do think it's important for us during this year, during this season, to be respectful to others, to try to be the followers of Christ that God calls us to be. And I want to encourage us just to be, be able to listen. Um, Jesus did a lot of listening. You know, he, he was obviously active in the lives of sinners. He had no sin, but he was willing to sit with people. He was willing to walk along a path with them and just listen to their story. And as we walk through these days where a lot of people are upset and angry, I just want to encourage us to be good listeners and to just encourage and just know that we can still have relationships with people who have different opinions than us. It's sometimes okay that not everyone agrees with us. We still owe people love and respect because uh, that's how God shines through us is when we show love to others and respect to them. 
Um, just some simple thoughts tonight to, uh, to think about in your personal time or with your family. I hope that you are having a great day. I hope that you continue to have a good rest of the week. And as was announced this past Sunday, we are going to resume our 10 o'clock Sunday school hour this coming Sunday. Um, the elders have decided to kind of take in-person gatherings um, kind of on a progressive approach. We're not starting back all the services at once. Um, we're just kind of going to see their desire to see how things play out. So we will start 10 o'clock Sunday school this coming Sunday. We will have one class that will meet in the auditorium. So there won't be any kids classes at this time. As they announce Sunday, they are hoping to uh, bring back Sunday night services and Wednesday night services, hopefully sometime in August. Um, but they're waiting to get kind of some more guidance and direction on that and how that needs to be handled with the children. So I do encourage you to be praying for them and helping them during this season that we find ourselves in. But concerning Sunday, the Sunday school class will be, uh, it's going to be called Outcry, and it's going to be the study of Exodus, and um, I'll be speaking this uh, coming Sunday over Exodus chapters 1 through 10. So if you have some time um, before Sunday, I do encourage you to read over those chapters, and I think there's a lot in the Exodus story that we can relate to right now in our current situations. And uh, again, just encourage you to read those and um, we'll see what good comes from it. But um, if you can, hope to see you Sunday.